Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to JP Barbecue. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Today, we are not doing a cooking video. We are going to be doing a cleaning video. We had a massive cookout this weekend, and I got to get this bad boy cleaned up. You guys stay tuned. I'm going to show you how we get this Lone Star Grill offset smoker cleaned up, doing a JP style. Check it out. First thing I gotta tell you that you gotta get you, you gotta get you some of these gloves right here. Your hands, if not, are gonna get really, really dirty. So get you some gloves. I use the same gloves that I use for, for cooking, uh, for cleaning. So when I clean my Lone Star Grill Offset Smoker, I normally start off with the firebox first. As you can see, uh, it's got a lot of ashes in there. And what I like to do is I'll get me uh, like the shovel and also have an aluminum recycling bin where I collect my ashes and then and then I throw them away but normally I just start off with something simple and just brush off the ashes you know off the top so once I get that got to get this grate off of there and it's and it's pretty heavy it's a pretty it's half inch steel so, and as you can see, there's a lot in there. Sometimes I just may, you know, simple as this, just brush it off, you know, get it off of there, and then get this big old steel grate out of the way. And it is heavy. You know, you could almost do, uh, it is heavy, guys. So I push this over to the side Whew, that's a workout. I was gonna say you can do weights with it. So the next thing I do is I grab my rake, my ash rake, and this one I got at Home Depot. I was, uh, you know, it's the only thing I could find. But if you have a shovel, you can use a shovel. But if you have an ash rake, like if you have a fireplace or something, you can use that as well. And just start scooping the ashes right out of there. Now, if, if you want to avoid having to do this, um, when you get your Lone Star Offset Smoker, you may want to opt in to get the ash pan included. Uh, I didn't. You know, I look back and I start thinking of all the things that I could have got or should have got or, you know, why didn't I get this? Why didn't I get that? You know, I pretty much pictured myself doing this uh, instead of taking out an ash pan. But, you know, if you want to get that, that ash pan, you know, they, they have them there. So, but this will work for me. Once you got most of it out with the, with the ash rake, you know, I also like to sweep as much of this out of here. Just get it off of all of the racks. And this brush, I got this brush at Home Depot. I think it was just a couple of bucks. I already had the rod, so. You know, just just be creative. You know, get you something that you feel is going to work for you. For those tight little corners where you can't get the brush or the ash rake, get you one of these little spatula. You know, this will work good to get down in that corner. That's if you want to get that far into it. If you want to just leave that little bit in there, I'm sure it's not going to hurt it. But uh, I get it all out. There we go. Once you got it out of that corner, just brush it into your shovel and you're good to go. And that's really about all I do uh, as far as cleaning to it. Got my ash collector. And then just dump it away in here, store it. If you want to store it, if you want to just throw it away, just throw it away at a later date. I'm not 100% certain of this, but um, some people say that if you have like a compost pile uh, you can throw this on the compost pile and it's and it's helps it you know compost even faster 
Uh, I don't have a composter. I'm not going to be starting to compost pile just for the mere fact that they, they stink. But, you know, if you live out in the country and you have a compost pile or something like that, you know, uh, you can use it. You know, that's what they tell me. And that's it for that. The other thing I do to the firebox is I like to spray it down with canola oil. I get this canola oil at the Dollar General store. You know, they're they're cheap, you know. And for what I'm using it for, this is just a, an anti-rusting agent, you can call it. Uh, one of the things, I don't know if you guys can notice, I keep my smoker under the shed and when, when I get ready to start smoking, I push it out a little bit. That way the vent stack is, is on the outside and all that smoke doesn't funnel into the carport and stuff. So it'll just funnel out that way. Uh, but keeping out of the elements, you know, it's, it's, it's something you're going to have to take into consideration because, you know, as, as big as this thing is, it, it is a piece of steel and it will rust on you. Got to gotta take care of it. This is an investment, um, you know, on your part and on my part. And we just got to gotta take care. And as simple as this, just spraying it down. Let me aim the camera down a little bit. And this is all I do. Spray the racks. Just spray it down. Kind of like that first time that you started to season it when you, when you first got it and you follow the instructions on seasoning it. Kind of same thing you should do. You know, it's going to help prevent that rust from, from building up. Get it down into the corners, uh, into the welds, and do the same thing with the with the grate. That big old heavy weight lifting thing. I'll put it in a little bit like that, and get it sprayed down. And you'll be surprised. You know, you do this on a regular basis, and this thing, this thing will last you forever. I do that, and I take it out, and I flip it over. And do the same thing to this side. Calling it good. There we go. Firebox is done. Okay, so that's that's about all I do to the firebox. Um, let me close this top down. I'm not gonna need that. Oh, here's another thing. Uh, this top griddle grate. I don't know if you can see it. Let me move the camera over a little bit. Right here. Yesterday or before I started the 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 cook, it had some rust on here. So I I sprayed it down with that canola oil. And the fire burned off the canola oil and it burned the rust off as well. So, you know, using it on a regular basis will probably also help keep that, that rust off of it. All right, let's get to it. Close this bad boy up. Got that closed down. And the other thing you're gonna need too, guys, besides gloves, you're gonna need you some some rags, some throwaway rags, because if if you put these after, in the washing machine after you're done with them, you know mama's gonna have a whew, something. To, mama, you're gonna be hurting. Mama's not gonna like that. She's gonna be upset. When you're done with it, I'll show you why we throw them away. All the fun stuff inside the main chamber, down at the bottom, guys. It does get pretty grungy even after you know maybe if you're having a light cook probably not as bad but if you're having a massive cookout you know it will get uh pretty bad as you you can see here so um what i like to do here is i use my my spatula and i start off with just scraping the big stuff off of there you just scrape this stuff off usually i just set the tuning plate right on top of the trash can and just scrape this stuff off. 
I don't, as far as cleaning the tuning plate, this is really all I do. I don't do much more to it than, than that. You know, I don't wash these. You know, I just scrape the gunk off of it. And and what this is, this is, uh, I guess you could say it's carbonized food. You know, food that just dropped or maybe fat that dropped off of it and just burned off. There we go. And, you know, just have your trash can nearby and get this stuff just scraped off as much as you can. That's all I do. That's really all I do to the tuning plate. You know, got a few more of them to do. The really fun stuff comes after the tuning plate. Before you get into this next step, you want to make sure you go ahead and drain whatever water or fluid was left. Uh, inside the bottom of the of the main chamber of the chamber cabinet you know get that water drained out because what's left is got to be scraped out um, maybe if you got a big enough yard or something maybe you can just take a pressure washer to it or something like that but uh, I, I don't have that luxury but I gotta get in here and just scrape it out so and again boom how I do it I'm interested to see how other people actually clean their Lone Star Grill offset smoker, but this is the way I do it. So, just get to it scraping, try to get as much of it off the sides. Get back in as far as you can. I think what I'm going to do here, since there's still uh, a lot of liquid in there, I'm going to grab a bucket of water pour it in there and then catch it on the back end. There we go and we just catch it on the back end. Okay for this next step what you want to get is a bucket of hot water um, you know one of the mop buckets uh, fill it with hot water and you want to put maybe a cup of vinegar in it with maybe a little bit of dishwashing soap. It, that's what I use to, to clean on the inside. And the other thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need one of these scrub brushes, these throwaway things here. I got this one at the dollar store. I think I paid a dollar, or maybe I got two for a dollar, I'm not sure. Cheap, why? You gonna throw it away when you're done. That vinegar helps cut that grease also. Got that done. And just start brushing away. You see what I'm talking about? Now it doesn't have to be, you know, brand spanking new, like, like you know, coming from the factory. What you want to do is just get as much of it as you can. Once you got it scraped up pretty good, you know, it's just a matter of draining the water. You may have to do it one more time. Uh, maybe not. That's why I like to use a cup of vinegar. Uh, it helps with, with cutting that grease down and getting it all drained in one shot. Let me get back to scrubbing a little bit more. All right, that should be it. You don't have to do the whole thing. Just down there where all the grease dripping, uh, dripping, the grease drippings fall under. Once you're done with that brush, you see what I mean? Throw it away. You're not gonna keep that. You spent the dollar. And here's where the rags come into play. We're gonna wipe it all down on the bottom, get it nice and clean. Dirty rag. <laughs> and if you do it right one rag is really all you're gonna need you know I got these rags at at Home Depot you know they're you know a bag of 36 of them for like 13 bucks you know you can't beat that you know get you these rags you know they'll they'll save you a heartache 
All right, good to go. I'm gonna throw that out. Put that over there in the sink. Get this aluminum out of here. That's it. And the next thing you wanna do is get you some more Pam and just spray the bottom of it just like if it was day one that you got it. This will help protect it from getting rusted and whatnot. You know, spray the whole thing down, even the racks. What we're trying to prevent here is rust building up. And again, Dollar General. Uh, a dollar, maybe two bucks, you know, and you know, you're gonna throw it away anyway. And that's it for the inside of the chamber. Now for the fun part. Time to get those racks cleaned up. See, having something like this, this big, lets you get these toys like this. And mama's looking at me all funny. Find you a nice patch of grass that you don't like anymore. Set you a couple of blocks. Put your grill grates on it. Fired up. <laughs> That's how we do it, Texas style. See, once you got all that stuff burnt off, it's just it's just carbon. It ain't nothing anymore. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. Let me turn this gas off. Get you a nice brush. You know, I like using these brush. I don't like using those wire brushes because those little bristles sometimes will fall out. They'll get caught in that in that uh, expanded metal, and, and you can't see it. Next thing you know, you're cooking some food and. You know, you give your buddy uh, some, some barbecue ribs and he bites into that metal and he swallows it and you're taking them down to the emergency. F that. Get you something that's got big bristles, yellow, you can see it. And uh, you ain't got to, and you bite down into this, you're going to feel it. You know, and plus, you know, it's yellow, you can see it. Let's brush it off. And I'm done with the grill grates. It's good to go. Um, and put them back inside the Lone Star. Spray them down with a little bit of that canola oil, olive oil, and you're ready to go for the next cookout. Mama's looking at me funny. Yes. <laughs> Just got the last grill grate cleaned up with the, with the torch. Just matter of wiping them down and putting everything back in its place. Let's go ahead and put these uh, tuning plates and grill grates back in. Guys, we're just about done. You know, that's all there is to uh, cleaning the inside of your Lone Star Grill. Put that bad boy right there. Closest to the firebox. Spray it down also with some, with some olive oil. Or, or, you know, some canola oil. What we're trying to do here is prevent the buildup of rust. What we're trying to do is keep that rust down to a minimum. We'll get this top one in. Okay, and what you wanna do is spray the grill grates down as well. But I got the inside done now. Uh, showed you guys how I clean the firebox how I clean the inside of the main chamber, how I clean my grill grates, uh, how I clean the tuning plates as well. And I'm interested to see how some of you guys do it, you know, in regards to uh, cleaning your Lone Star grill or any offset at that. Uh, do you follow kind of the same setup or, or you know, do you do something different? I have heard, you know, in, it, you know, in addition to what I did with the grill grates, I used that weed burner. Uh, you know, some people use a, a pressure washer and, and they clean them that way as too, as, as well. Uh, I like using the, the weed torch, you know, the, that big old torch that I was using because it just, it burns everything off of it, you know. There's there's nothing cleaner than than when it's burnt with fire. You know, sorry to say that, but that's, that's the truth. So now just got to do the outside. The outside is fairly simple. I just use a little bit of water with some vinegar and just wipe the 
the whole thing down. And I start off first, just, you know, kind of like washing your car. You know, start one in and work your way, you know, to the other side. You know, I usually start off here on top of the firebox. You know, it tends to get a lot of, a lot of damage here because of the fire being right there. And get up here. And as you can see, it's, it is dirty on the outside. Up here on the top, especially, all the, I don't know what to call it, the ashes or the soot or whatever, you know, comes out of the stack. Get the door wiped down. And I'm gonna come back around, you know, and get it with a, with a dry cloth as well and dry this off. I'm gonna keep that moisture to a minimum. There we go. And you just do this like the way I'm doing it and it'll last you a long time. I'm gonna get the rest of this done on the outside and uh, you know, I'm interested to see how you guys, you know, may may do your your grill or your offset smoker or your, you know, stick burner, whatever you got. You know, I'm interested. You know, to me, this is a learning experience. You know, just like everybody else, everybody's, you know, watches these YouTube videos because, you know, we're trying to learn the next best thing, how to do things. Um, if you do yours just a little bit different, do me a favor, put it down in the description. Um, or, or, you know, send me a link through, through email and say, hey, JP, watch my channel. You know, this is the way I clean my smoker. You know, I'm interested to, to see, you know, how you guys do it. You know, especially people like T. Roy Cooks and, and Justin from Baby Back Maniac. You know, them guys got some big smokers as well. You got uh, Grumpus on Fire. He's got a very nice smoker too. You know, anybody, if I missed your name, you know, do me a favor. Put it down in the description and say, hey, I'm going to do a video to JP. You know, it'll come out on this date. And, and I'm interested to see it as well. I'm going to finish this up. I appreciate it. If you do me a favor, hit that little subscribe button right there in the corner. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And uh, if you get a chance, visit my affiliate links. And uh, I will see you guys on the next good night. You guys take care. Have a good one.